We'll look at Hebrews 11.25. Hebrews 11.25. License to sin? Absolutely not. I'm going to scare the devil out of you. I'm going to scare the sin out of you. All right. Now, I'm going to give you the... I'm going to, uh, to heal your wound a bit, and re I'm going to slap you just a little bit here, and then the slap's going to get a little harder and harder, all right? So here's the lightest slap, okay? So I'm just getting you ready for the big one, okay? I'm just getting you ready for the big one. <laughs> yeah, go to the bathroom, brother. Yeah, yeah, amen, brother. Yeah, amen. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Here's the best one, the best one. That way you don't, the least negative one. Hebrews 11:25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Well, that don't sound bad, Pastor. Sin is pleasurable. Yeah, but sin is pleasurable for how long? Season. You want the evidence? I'll give you the evidence. After you commit the sin, all right? Don't you feel rotten after that? Don't you feel like that you've already spent all your joy on that rush of the moment, on that a moment you experience, and then after that, what good did it do for you? Yeah. Right after you experienced that pleasure. I, I just ruined your day, didn't I? <laughs> Sin is pleasure, but only for a season. Temporary, right? Always after drinking the bottle. Always after that puff of smoke. Always after that, man, you feel awesome after that, huh? No, after that rush of the moment, then what? You're like, what good was that? It's gone now. Amen. That's why you have to keep resorting to it again, right? That's why you have to keep going, right? All right, but this verse says this. Suffering is better than the pleasure of sin. You see that? People don't like suffering, but I'm going to tell you one thing. If you were to choose to suffer for Christ or the pleasure of sin, this is preferable. That's what the Bible says. That's how bad sin is. Sin is so bad that the worst thing you could do for Jesus Christ is always better than that. Someone preach right there. All right. Y'all whine about suffering, but you know what? Thank God you're not living in pleasure and sin. Thank God you're not billionaires. Thank God that you're not yes, living sir. in Hollywood, yes, immersing yourself in a party and a drunken spree, and then committing fornication, and God knows what. Thank God you don't have millions of dollars on your account. No, I want that. No, I want that. No, thank God. I'm going through suffering. Oh, you know, it's a small church. Oh, you know, people scoff at me. I don't like that. I choose the drunken lifestyle. No, thank God. Thank God that you're suffering. Thank God it's financially bad for you. Thank God you're in a small church. Bless the Lord you never tasted that cigarette. You know, praise the Lord you never tried fornication. Praise the Lord. Bless God. Amen. Thank God you're not messed up in that one. You raise a teenager, you're going to raise a Christian family, then, oh, I want to go to that party, you know, I don't know why you never sent me to that party. You just, oh, I have to suffer being an oddball in the school. And you go, bless God, amen, bless God, amen. praise the Lord, good for you, man. That's what Moses did. See, it's always better to be at the worst for Jesus than in sin, because the best of sin is always that moment. It's only one party. See, it's only one puff of smoke. It's only one lifetime compared to eternity. All right, I, I just wasted so much time on that one. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6. All right, now let's... On, okay, now let's get to the worst ones, all right? Oh. And we will go, go through this quickly. Oh, yeah, we're we're going to go through this quickly. License to sin? Are they joking? You think that we're, we're the type that does the license to sin? Come on. Come on, man. Amen, brother. Look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 8. Oh, man, I hate that verse. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, see how much you sow in sin, you have to what? You have to reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, how often have you sowed to your flesh more than what your spirit wanted? Yesterday? Today? Oh, you think you came to church today. It makes up for everything, huh? How much have you sowed to that flesh more than the spirit today? He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. See, you reap what you sow. You smoke too many cigarettes. You get lung cancer. You keep drinking. You're going to get cirrhosis in the liver. You are a rebellious child. Wait till you have kids, and they're going to be worse than you. You reap what you sow. Oh, man. Oh, th this is good preaching, amen. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels great. All right, let's... Let's go to the book of 
Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. That, that's why there's this popular saying, no rest for the wicked, right? Where did that yeah. phrase come from? Isaiah chapter 57, verse 21. I promise you, I guarantee you this. If, you, if you're a saved Christian living in sin, this is the number one thing I can guarantee compared to all this. You don't have peace. You definitely do not have peace. You have to live every day worrying about how to take care of your situation, your problem, and you know you can't pray for it because you know why you can't pray for it because you did not repent of that certain sorry sin that you're that's doing right. and that's why you don't feel like praying anymore about it. Lord, will you help me with this problem? You can't even feel like praying about that because you don't have peace about it because God's like, yeah, I'll take it away because you got to get rid of uh -huh -huh first. Oh, God, but no peace. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. All right, let's look at another verse right here. Uh, we're also going to look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Man, this is fun, eh, amen? This is fun, right? Yeah, this is fun, right? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 through 7. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 through 7. You know what the next punishment is? Pastor, ain't that enough? No, it ain't enough. You've been a bad boy. That, it's not enough for you, all right? You know what God has to do? It's called chastisement. But you know what that verse says about chastisement? It's scourging. Have you ever been scourged before? You know what scourging is? It's like you getting a belt and a whip on your back, and then you get a lash over there, and then you get a cut. That's a scourge. By the way, how was Jesus scourged, huh? That was even worse. What do you think God meant by that then? Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he what? Chasteneth. But this chasteneth is like what? And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. He has to, because verse 7, if you're his son and he's your father, he has to do that. So he has to scourge you to get you back on the right path. So not only do you reap what you sow after committing that sin, or scourging you at the same time to teach you some extra lesson there. Oh, God, isn't reaping what I sow enough? No, no, you gotta, you got to be scourged at the right path. All right, we can stop right there, but uh, that wouldn't be fair. We're going to do the whole counsel of God. Amen. All right, let's also, look, let's also look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And if scourging don't save you, then he's going to kill you. Okay. All right? He's going to end your life. Oh, God won't do that. No, he does. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He can kill you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We'll look at verse 30 through 31. God will just end your life. Be in peace when you keep doing the drug, right? Be at peace. Just don't be surprised. Lightning might fall from out of heaven all of a sudden. Look at this verse right here, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Why? Because you're not judging yourself. For if we would judge ourselves, look at that, we should not be judged. If you won't judge yourself, God will judge you, and you don't want God to judge you. All right? He's going to make you sick. So notice right here, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30 through 31, he'll end your life or he'll make you sick. Oh, pastor, I can't come to church today because I'm sick. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> watch, watch right there. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you. Remember our sermon today? I'm encouraging you. Bless God. Yeah. <laughs> 1 Corinthians Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Not only that, God is going to send you destruction. Destruction. He's going to send destruction. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Sin ain't fun, I'll tell you that much, all right? Trust me, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. 
If any man defile the temple of God, that's serious, right? You're God's temple. Him shall what? God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. All right, then he's going to destroy you as well. Why is your job destroyed? Why is your life destroyed? Why is your marriage destroyed? Why is your, you know, why? Certain sins you've done in your life. Why is your church and ministry destroyed? Mm-hmm. I'll preach right there. All right, well, anyway, let's continue. We've got we to gotta go over this quickly. I don't know why I keep harping on this. We're preaching on sin here. That's why. It's got to be preached again. That's right. All right, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians... No, 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. That's not the worst. Well, how bad can it get, Pastor? Oh, really bad. You can get demon-possessed. You can get demon-possessed. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Imagine being turned over to Satan. You think that's fun? Imagine Satan having do, had, has the freedom to do whatever he wants to do with your body. You think that's fun? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So look at that. This person is saved. His spirit saved. But his body can be turned over to Satan. If there's one thing you don't want, if you, okay, if there's one thing you don't want, it, oh, I don't want God to be in charge of my life. What, you want the devil to be in charge of your life then? What in the world, man? Oh, I don't want God to chastise me. You want the devil to not chastise you, but to like what? What, kill you? Ruin you? Make you miserable? That's worse, being turned over to Satan. Body turned over to Satan. That is one of the worst things that can ever happen to you. I'll tell you what happened to that person when he got that from Paul. He got right with God at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. He was weeping and crying. Because why? This is not pretty. This is scary. If you don't think it's, okay, you know how Satan attacked Job? And that was within permissive boundaries. If God gave the devil full freedom to do whatever he wanted to do with Job, do you know how bad Job's life would be? All right. Uh, now that's close. Second Corinthians 5. I got like 10 more or a lot more, but uh, yeah, but we'll just close it here. Encouragement, bless God. So if people tell you that we preach license to sin, you just laugh at them, okay? Because uh, <laughs> no, no, we don't. We don't. Trust me. All right. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 5. Now, this is what I hate. I, I, don't, I, I don't know why the Bible won't just tell me what it is, you know? This is what I hate about this verse. There are verses you hate, Pastor. Don't you love every verse? I'm sorry. There are some verses that I actually hate because of my wicked flesh. Because, oh man, I, look, look at 2 Corinthians 5. Look at this. Verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. See, it doesn't matter with what you do in your lifetime. There's a judgment at the end. <clears throat> that everyone may receive the things done in his body. See that? It's not your soul. Your soul is saved, but your body, right? And that body can be turned over to this being here, right? So whatever you do in your body, according to that, he hath done, whether it be good or bad. All right, so we're judged what we did in our body. But look at verse 11, and this is what I hate about this verse. You know what's worse about this? I hate this verse so much that I memorize this verse. <laughs> Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Oh, I hate that. Why? But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust are also are made manifest in your consciences. It's so terrifying that your conscience is going to remember it. And it did a good job with me. Now I remember that one. What's so bad about this verse, Pastor? Well, it says that we're going to be going through the judgment seat of Christ, and that's what makes all the difference, folks. It doesn't matter what you go through in life. What matters at the end is that judgment seat of Christ at the end. And at that judgment seat of Christ, God called it terror. Now, if you, do you know what? If God says terror, you think he says that lightly or he's kidding around or he really means that? You know what he calls hell? He calls hell wrath of God. Now, this may not be hell, but terror is a pretty a scary word like wrath, okay? And when it may not be hell, but it might be something close to that. 
That's the scariest part. I had one member saying, oh, what is that terror? What is that terror? I was like, I wish I can tell you. I don't know what the terror is. And, she, and then that church member said, well, I don't like that. That's scary. And I was like, exactly. That's why it's scary, because you don't know what it is. Uh, my brother said one time, you know, I mean, he went through a lot of scary things with my dad when he misbehaved, but he said the scariest thing he ever went through, the worst thing he ever went through in his life was when he did something wrong, and then my dad answered the phone, and then when my dad heard, my dad said, we'll see when I get there. And that terrified my brother, that terrified the life out of him. I mean, he'd rather get the beating or whatever, but when his dad said that, he's like, you know, he just wants it to happen, and he doesn't know what it is. He wants to get it over with. That's what God's doing, see? We'll see, child. So when you're doing that sin, you know what God's doing up in heaven? When the rapture's about to sound and he calls your name? We'll see when I get there. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the truth of thy word. I pray today's teaching have been a blessing to the hearer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, y'all bless and go in peace. Go in peace, as Jesus said. Go in peace. Yeah, encourage each other. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Yeah, there you go.